Welcome, I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel. Today, I'll talk to you about the Aries Ingress for 2024. First off, I wanted to say thank you to all of my patrons. I appreciate all of your support. If you would like to become a patron, you can join at patreon.com slash Nina Griffin. At the highest tier, you can get my monthly Magical Elections ebook, which teaches you how and when to make astrological talismans for a variety of needs and purposes. Let's briefly talk about what an Aries ingress is. It is simply the horoscope for the moment that the sun enters the first minute of the first degree of the first sign, which is Aries. So as soon as the sun enters zero degrees Aries, which happens once a year, that is in fact the astrological new year. It usually happens around March 20th, within a day or so. Now the Aries ingress essentially gives an overview for the coming year for the following 12 months until next March. So the astrological year doesn't quite run in conjunction with our calendar year, but rather goes March to March of every year. The chart can be set for any location on Earth, and so although all the zodiacal positions of the planets will be the same regardless of where you set it for, the house positions and rulerships of the different planets will vary. So for example, what we are going to be looking at is the chart set for Washington, D.C., which is going to give us an overview of what would happen in the United States, since Washington is our capital, for the following 12 months. However, you could do this for any capital of any country, and if you wanted to get more local information, you can set it, of course, for any other town or city, remembering that a local chart is always going to be subordinate to the larger national chart. Most of this video is going to concern key universal indications in the Aries Ingress that are applicable regardless of where you are. So even though I will speak to some items that are specific to the United States, most of the video will focus on planets, zodiacal positions, and aspects, which are true regardless of where you set the chart for. One of the key factors of the Aries Ingress is the moon. And I like to start my analysis here because the moon is always going to be a very theme-setting element of the Aries Ingress. This year, the moon is in Leo, and it opposes Pluto and trines the sun. Now, as I said, the moon is key in Aries Ingress charts because of all the planets it most resembles the earthly realm. Both the moon and our world are highly changeable and malleable. The moon also corresponds to the human body and mind, including one's emotional state. So the condition of the moon in the Aries Ingress describes the entire gestalt of the world, the worldwide mood and mental focus for the upcoming 12 months. The moon in Regal Leo points to a worldwide focus on leaders and rulers and the governing class in general. And indeed, 2024 will see the largest number of elections in history in a single year. 76 countries will be holding elections this year. The moon's trine to the exalted sun, another symbol of leaders and leadership, supports this mental focus on leaders and it being a key preoccupation for much of the world this year, especially since the moon in Leo is received by the sun, strengthening the harmonious relationship between people and leaders. Taken on its own, the sun-moon trine suggests harmony with leadership and more or less status quo continuing. However, the moon also closely opposes Pluto at one degree Aquarius. This Pluto triggers the 2020 Great Conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn at zero Aquarius, which among other things foretold a focus on large programs intended to take society into the future. Infrastructure projects, clean energy, education, scientific research, jobs, etc. So this year, 2024, will be about people worldwide evaluating these ambitious initiatives that have been developed since 2020, and the elections are a referendum on how well we think those initiatives are going. The fact that the moon opposes Pluto suggests a critical look, not necessarily a rejection, but more that the future is in the voters' sights, they are laser-focused on it, and everyone is voting with the next few years and even decades in mind. For once, we recognize that what we do now will impact us as well as future generations. In this chart, Mercury also conjoins the North Node. In Vedic astrology, the North Node tends to obscure and pollute whatever planet it conjoins, 
So with Mercury, we could get twisted information that may be tainted by criminality, which is another North Node association. The use of artificial intelligence is also implied since the North Node is related to unorthodox and unusual things and technologies. Expect heavily manipulated information and communication this year, very heavy-handed propaganda, liberally distributed, and generally making it difficult to discern the truth. The condition of Venus also bears noting. She is besieged, which means that she is between the two malefics, Mars and Saturn. She is having a hard time because of it. In past years, her being besieged symbolized rights being taken away from women and LGBTQ community, all of whom are symbolized by Venus. Now, Venus is not without resources because she is exalted, but she is about to conjoin Saturn and receive Saturn into her exaltation. So Saturn, a malefic, is very well positioned to harm Venus. The conjunction in Pisces specifically suggests matters pertaining to fertility, since Pisces is a fertile sign. And indeed, we are having a discussion around IVF procedures, which one of the U.S. state courts made illegal in that state. So certainly expect more rules around fertility and attempts to legislate and restrict reproductive care quite broadly. Now, we also need to note that Venus is applying to a sextile of Jupiter with mutual reception. So there is some protection and help given to Venusian individuals to soften the blow. But the fact remains that a conjunction has greater impact than a sextile. So we don't want to overstate the extent to which Jupiter can help. His help is a lot better than nothing, but for any planet being sandwiched between the malefics is a severe affliction. We should also note that Mars in Aquarius squares Uranus. This is a disruptive and explosive energy. Mars in Aquarius in particular points toward a desire to destroy structures involving society at large, whether it's destruction of social programs, taxes, education, infrastructure, other things for the common good. It can be a downright warlike combination, so I wouldn't exclude actual war and conflict in various places, as well as more peaceful but still intense internal struggles and power struggles about allocation of public resources that are nonetheless quite disruptive and the kind of struggles that involve a dramatic change of direction for governments. We also see Jupiter conjoining Uranus. I've been talking a lot about Jupiter conjunct Uranus in my monthly videos, so I won't belabor it here, but this is an explosive and revolutionary and extreme combination. The fact that this conjunction makes a sextile to Venus and Saturn tells us that this revolutionary movement could be related to or motivated by women's rights, LGBTQ rights, etc. So it's not only that we have change in these areas, but women and LGBTQ status is a key motivator for these explosive energies. Now, from the perspective of Saturn, Saturn here is conjoined by Venus and sextile Jupiter. So Saturn's actually doing very well in this chart from his perspective. He is actually besieged by benefics. He's got Venus bodily on one side and a sextile to Jupiter on the other. So whatever or whoever Saturn represents this year can do no wrong. It's like they're between a pillow and a soft place, if you will. We'll talk more about what Saturn means in the United States later on in the video. I also wanted to highlight a few similarities between this chart and the 2022 Aries Ingress. They're quite dramatic, and it's not that common that we see these common themes come up so soon. Now, in 2022, this was really the developing year where Russia's invasion of Ukraine kind of took on full force. It was the biggest event of the year. It's also the year that saw in the United States the federal right to abortion being struck down after half a century. So in 2024, we see that we have a moon opposing Pluto. In 2022, we have a moon square Pluto. So the theme here seems to be that in 2024, we're going to be getting more nuclear threats, primarily from Russia, who is ruled by Aquarius and Taurus. Things might get pretty tense this year because of the nature of the opposition. Now, this is, again, moon opposing Pluto, which is related to nuclear power. In 2024, we see Venus besieged between the malefics in Pisces. 2022, Venus is besieged in Aquarius. We have already seen how it's hazardous for women's rights and LGBTQ rights, so I think we'll see more of the same this year. In 2024, we have Mars square Uranus. In 2022, we had Venus, Mars, Saturn, all square Uranus. This is a warlike combination, as I discussed above. 
So the Ukraine war will continue and it, it'll ratchet up a few notches, making it reminiscent of 2022 and the intensity of fighting that we saw in that year. Other wars may be starting this year as well. I'm sure that it's going to continue in terms of intensity in Israel and Palestine. In 2024, we had we have Jupiter conjoining Uranus. In 22, Jupiter conjoined Neptune. So in 22, Jupiter conjoining Neptune manifested by the world coming together in an unprecedented way to support Ukraine's defense. Jupiter conjoining Uranus, on the other hand, is about trying to move forward in a more drastic and extreme way, so it's not warm and fuzzy, but very intense. This is an attempt to burst through a stalemate, and we see lots of stalemates going on in Ukraine, in Israel, lots of places. Now let's talk about this chart as set for Washington, D.C., because it'll show us what will happen for the United States as it is set for the capital of this country. I like to look at the angles first to see what planets are most powerfully emphasized in a given location. This chart has Mars on the IC, the fourth house cusp, suggesting simmering, hidden conflict, and aggression that's brewing just out of sight. Given the Mars square to Uranus, this suggests a partly submerged conflict around policy and public funding, Aquarius, that is quite influential in a subterranean way. It's still hiding. In addition, we could see problems starting to emerge that relate to real estate. Note that the fourth house is quite busy with three classical planets, Venus, Mars, and Saturn. Mars and Saturn are malefics, and Venus is besieged. Now, this chart, in my view, doesn't have the indications of a major fiscal meltdown this year. And in fact, things are holding together okay financially for a good part of the year. But the ongoing slump in commercial real estate will be noticeable starting this year partly due to the high interest rates. So we could see a slow motion process developing later this year and then really coming into view in 2025. Now, the U.S., of course, is having elections this year, like so many other countries. We're having both chambers of Congress up for election or parts of them and the White House, as well as countless state and local elections. So the strong fourth house emphasis shows that challengers in all kinds of races are getting a lot of attention because the fourth house governs those trying to unseat existing leaders who are ruled by the 10th house. Most of that attention on the challengers is negative, as we see by the malefics in that house, and often deservedly so. When we see both malefics in someone's house, that chart may be warning us about that person's intentions and character. My advice, given what is happening in the fourth house, is to expect change this year at all levels. The ninth house represents the court system and judiciary, and the moon being present there tells us that the courts in the U.S. are laser focused on adjudicating the legality of projects for the common good established in the last few years, but also the more general meaning of voting, public participation, and so forth. The moon in Leo itself means that they are adjudicating the nature of power. What can the president do? What can people in power do? That is the nature of Leo. Technology will be another area where the courts will be heavily involved this year, often critically. Now, let's talk about just a few elements emphasized in other countries. The Venus-Saturn conjunction in Pisces conjoins the ascendant in Moscow this year, if we set the Aries ingress for Moscow, suggesting the start of a transformation process in Russia that will likely take a few years to become fully visible. The first house in general is very busy in Moscow, suggesting a profound change in national identity and direction that really gets underway this year and develops further in coming years. The very same Venus-Saturn conjunction is on the midheaven in Beijing, showing a similar transformative process that is more focused on the government and leadership, since the midheaven rules the people in power. Even more than in Russia, China is about to undergo a major shift in its top governmental policies as well as officials, as this Aries ingress specifically activates the Chinese presidency. So there could be big news out of China this Aries ingress, one of several such years to come. Again, we are entering a few very active years for both Russia and China. We also have to consider that Taiwan, being a beautiful island, is likely symbolized by Pisces, a water sign. So we could see China taking a significant step toward limiting or hemming in Taiwan militarily this year. Thanks for watching. I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic Channel.